So I'm working on a little commission here and thought I'd do a video on applying uh, the oil layer. Um, so far what's been done, he's been prepped, he's been primed, um, and he has his uh, basic shaded airbrush layer on. So this is all acrylics right now. Um, this actually came out really good, really smooth for airbrushing for me. I'm not very good at it, um, honestly. So um, I'm really happy when they come out really nice. So it, it saves a lot of time and later with other materials, so he probably won't need much more, um, uh, you know, oils and pigments and stuff to get him where I want him. Um, so I'm actually really happy with this. I could leave him like this if I wanted to, but the reference I have and where I want to go is a little darker than this in some areas. So right now I'm going to apply some oils uh, to make the areas that are darker darker. Um, so, and I'll show you how I do that. Normally, uh, after I airbrush them and I'm going to apply oils or pigments or something, I'll spray a layer of dull coat, um, but I didn't do that with this one yet because I like his vibrancy and I don't want to kill that yet. Um, sometimes the oils won't stick well if he's not sprayed, so I'm hoping for the best and I hope that the uh, acrylics that I used will... Um, be okay for that, and since I'm not going to be too, doing too much with the oils, it should be okay. If I have a problem, I'm going to have to, you know, rub them off, spray them, and uh, do it again. It's not that you can't apply them, it's more that it just, it's more difficult to do. Sorry for my face entering the frame. Okay, <clears throat> so, um, since I want him darker, he's a little darker back here in the reference and on the legs and stuff, so what I'm going to do, I don't use black. Um, he's a chestnut, so um, instead I use uh, dark browns and even purples because this guy's got a very maroonish type color to him. So what I have here are the two colors I plan on mixing. Um, I believe this is burnt umber and some sort of purple color. I don't remember what I just did. But um, this little cup here, I have some paint thinner in it. I don't usually like to use paint thinner or dryers. Um, Dryers tend to make them tacky, even when I do put a very small amount, like it just even less than a drop. It just, I don't like the way it makes the oils feel. Um, thinner also sometimes makes it a little too thin and then it gets streaky and it takes forever to do. Um, I'll use thinner when I'm doing like markings and details and stuff like that. Um, what I like to work on is a piece of paper of some sort. You can use magazine paper, um, you know, sketchbook paper. Uh, this here is actually like a piece of contract paper that I had cut from a background I was using. So I don't like to waste paper, so I use it for a palette. And the reason I like to use paper is because you can actually see here from some older oops, some older paint here that's all dried up pretty much, sort of. Um, it actually soaks up the excess oil from the paint. You can see the stains around the other colors here. Um, and it actually helps it to dry faster. So you don't really need dryers in this case because the paper soaks up the majority of the oil. Um, and you put, let's see, I, I, you could see it actually seeping out of this one I just put here now. This one was a very oily, thin paint, but you could see it's actually starting to almost dry up a little bit and seep out into the paper here. So it's really helpful. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I take a small brush and I'm going to mix the two colors I want use. The only thing with this paper is that it's really absorbent, so like if I mix a little bit like that, it's going to be like dry or by the time like I want more. So I just mix a little more than normal. I mean, normally you probably don't really want to use the brush that you're going to be using to mix this because you just like cover it in paint and you don't really want that much. But I'm just doing this quick little thing since it doesn't need much. Okay, so once I have mixed what I want, I'm going to go to the horse. Now, I'm trying to get this lighting as best as I can. I have like a million lamps set up here. Uh, I'm trying not to cover them. All right, so I'm gonna need a little darker. So what I do is, there's actually a lot of paint on this brush right now, which is not good. Um, like I said, you probably wanna use a separate one to mix or a toothpick or something, but I'm just doing this really quick right now to show you. Um, you wanna put a very little where you want the darkness to be just to, in the areas that you want. Now I'm not like scrubbing or rubbing or anything, so 
I am just where I want these colors to go. You don't have to fill up the entire section, just basically blocking in where you want it darker. And you don't want to put too much. You don't want to see globs because then it'll take forever to dry. So you just want it just a little bit in each area where you want it. And it seems to be sticking okay, so probably not going to need the dull coat. Usually when the oils are really thin, it, you need the dull coat because they'll just slide all over the place and really not, um, not stay on. I really like this guy and how his color is coming out too, so that's why I figured I'd do a little tutorial on this one, because he's really cool. So I'll just show you this side for now. Alright, so when I've added the areas where I want the dark to go, I mean you could do the whole, both sides if you want, but I'm just going to show you um, this quickly. I've got a lot of work to do. Um, now I'm going to take a larger, a little bit of a firmer brush, and we're going to kind of scrub that in. Don't push too hard because you don't want to, you know, take off any of the acrylic, especially if you haven't sealed it um, before you did this. So you want to now scrub that in. So now we're basically staining the horse. So it's not even going to look like you have paint on there, it's just going to be a darker stain. Hopefully the lighting and whatever is picking this up. And you can see how it just stains it and doesn't paint it. It's hard to explain, like you don't want to see any strokes. It's just a stain. Because once you start seeing strokes, that means you have too much paint on there, and uh, it's going to take forever to dry. This will probably take um, probably one to two days. Um, if anything has white in it, white sometimes takes a really long time to dry, no matter how thin. I guess it's got to do with the, um, the makeup of it. I guess maybe the titanium dioxide or whatever is in there. Um, I don't know. But I found that white really does take a long time. So with white, sometimes I use water miscible oils. Um, because they dry faster than regular oils. So that is another trick to speed up your painting process. Um, see, and like, yeah, I barely did anything. I barely put any paint on, but look how that um, moved around the horse and got everywhere I needed it to get. So it's a very light process. Um, I, I hesitate to say light touching because the second one you're kind of scrubbing, but not too hard but it's a light application. It's not like acrylic, painting acrylic or painting, um, yeah, acrylic. Uh, I can't think of any other paints. Um, it's a staining process. It's very different than also painting on a canvas. Usually oils on a canvas, you want, you go thicker too. So it's just very, very lightly and, um, you get to go. So after a day or two of this dries, if I want to add more layers, more colors and stuff. I mean, I can add some lighter colors in here and smooth things out if I wanted to. It looks pretty good, though. Um, but usually, you can only go so far, and um, they start to fight you, and you can't add any more layers. So then you wait a couple of days for it to dry, and then you can add on top of that. Um, so uh, hopefully that helps explain how to apply oils, at least over the base layer of shaded acrylics. Um, so yeah. Hope that helps.